in this module, we're going to talk about leverage. Man, this is a really important topic, something that we're probably not really good at. How do we build leverage? Two ways we build leverage, one tactical and one financial. So if we look at those two forms of leverage, how do we use that within our setting for good or to help us in our career and also help our surroundings? That's what we're going to talk about in this module. So strap in, let's go through leverage at a high level for a strength conditioning coach. So we got two forms of leverage, one financial and two tactical. So if we're thinking about financial, it's the very simple premise of what would it cost to replace you? Really, could they replace you with a comparable or lower salary or compensation? You have very little to no leverage. If it's going to take a lot of money to replace you, you have a lot of leverage. That is the dichotomy when we think about leverage financially. What would it cost if you were going to leave that athletic department or organization? Think about that. What is your value? Now, there's a big indicator here, and I see this happen quite a bit. If you leave a position and they just simply don't replace it, you had no leverage, none. They didn't even care if you were there or not. They were just accommodating your seat and liked you for enough of a reason to tolerate you being around and gaining a salary, maybe some benefits. But really, honestly, you leaving really has no systemic impact on that organization or team. Zero leverage there. Now, alternatively, if they're like trying to play the strong arm game of saying, well, we have a thousand applicants and there's so many people who want your job. If you want to leave, good luck to you. And yet they find they can never really get the same level of coaching and expertise. And what we went through last module, finding opportunities, what we went through from that day one, what we went through from your experiential learning from all your internships and be able to provide a level of coaching and a level of expertise that is far superior to any of your other candidates come through and anyone that potentially might come through, it's going to cost a lot. Now, we could talk about this from a premium standpoint, right? The, the way an athletic department will actually effectively evaluate you is pretty binary. That good strength and conditioning leads to a lot less insurance premiums. This is a fact. That if we look at it from the context of really good programming, really good workload management, really good technique, really good, just being good. Being a good strength coach, and I know when I see it, right? We make them better, we hold them accountable, we have them execute at a high level. That when we see that, that manifests into less injuries, less time out, better performance, less surgeries, less rehab, having to bring in less specialists, millions of dollars are going out to basically get these athletes back on the field from maybe bad strength conditioning. It could be a loose correlation or it could be a very strong correlation. If we look at it from the time served from athletic training, let's say that athletic training has several full-time employees, but they, they employ a couple contractors or part-time people that are paying hourly. And those hourly or contractors have to work double time to be able to meet the match of, hey, constant injuries during preseason, Constant surgeries, constant rehab, constant getting them back and forth in terms of surgery, flying them to Germany to see a specialist. It's money. It's money. And when you leave, that money starts to go up. You can say, well, I'm worth that. I'm worth that. That when I leave a place, insurance premium and the cost of doing business just simply is a lot more expensive. The job that I do saves the school millions. So for me asking for five, ten thousand dollars more doesn't seem to it seems to be a bargain. Or hey, if you were gonna replace me with two people that are equal to the salary that I'm asking for, and I'm asking for half of that back. So if I make 40 grand and you have to pay two people 40 grand to accommodate what I was capable of doing, but I asked for 20, you just saved 20 grand. Leverage. What would it cost to replace you and what is your value? The other one is tactical. And tactical comes in a little different form, right? It comes in a little different context. You think about tactical, it's trying to create this leverage point with sports medicine, with nutrition, with sports psychology, with your coach, with administration. 
They need something from you and you need something from them. You need to coexist, but you also need to understand the bureaucracy and the power dynamic within an athletic department, right? The I'm the voice of reason, so who practices and who plays is ultimately up to sports medicine. Sure. But you know what the other end of it is, too, of athletes might listen to you more so than them. And if you say, no, I trust their judgment, I value their perspective, if they don't think it's in your best interest to play, I am with them. That is leverage. If you're with the sport coach and he's just doing the most ridiculous individual period and he's constantly just berating you for this guy's slow or this guy's not in shape or I don't like what you do there, what we used to do here, you have a moment there to go, okay, I can take the high road here and say, oh, this guy's a, this guy's a clown. He does, or, or this guy doesn't really, he's going to do a great job. He's just a hardworking guy or he's a clown and you can do better. And I'm going to talk to coach because I think you're right. I think this guy doesn't deserve to be a football coach here. Leverage. Right, these moments and working with athletes and working with athletes too of like, hey, you need me, I need you. That we need to have this coexistent relationship, this almost marriage of convenience, this transactional interaction of, hey, I need you to do these sets and reps of these exercises on this given day at this time in order for us to be a little bit better at football so we can keep our jobs and keep our quality of life for what it is. And you need this to be able to perform at a higher level to hopefully have an opportunity to play somewhere else down the road and monetize your skill set of playing football. All those things are on the table. It's all leverage. It's all talking, right? You might get this dynamic of, hey, I'm having a bad day. I don't really want to do it. Well, that doesn't really excuse the fact that we still need to do it. So how am I going to get you to do it? Power dynamics, the power of influence, the power of communication, right? In terms of weight gain, folks, like the, the most amazing, mind-blowing thing to me is when a nutritionist tells me that a weight gain athlete just simply needs to lift more or a weight loss athlete needs to do some morning cardio. Like it's an expenditure problem. We're training six to eight hours a week in the off season and we're practicing and meeting 20 hours a week in season. You think it's amount of calories burnt why that guy can't lose weight or it's impulse control. And the matter of fact, the guy's eating just completely has no control of what he puts into his body. We're going to enable that behavior by trying to create more work and then trying to put that athlete in a compromised position to create some sort of tendinopathy from doing biking or elliptical or whatever slow steady state cardio we're going to do for hours on end with a 350 to 400 pound guy. But what leverage do you have? Hey, I need you to have a conversation with this athlete. I need you to get down to the mess hall or that training table and sit down with them and talk to them about good choices. I need you to text them. Hey, I need you to create this group dynamic. You won't do it, so I'll do it. I have no leverage with a nutritionist if they're not willing to do the job. But no one's going to say to them, hey, if you don't do this job, you're not going to keep your job. But if I need them to do their job and I need them to help me do my job and not make my job harder, how do I create leverage with them? Hey, I'll talk good to the coaches with you. Hey, I'll get with the athletes with you. I'll get that person that doesn't really want to listen to you on your side. Hey, I, I'm going to help you make shakes after workouts. I'll do whatever it is I have to do. And these like little things that you don't really notice, they're all power dynamic shifting and ebbing and flowing constantly. This leverage point that we look at within athletic departments, these ecosystems that we're living in, right? There's alpha predators and then there's everyone else, right? But it doesn't really have this alpha predator, predator is predicated off the, the smallest and lowest in the chain on that ecosystem, that the whole thing survives based off a circular function. And in between, power is shifting and flowing from one direction to the next. And you're kind of in the middle of it. And you kind of have an ability from a tactical perspective to say, hey, I'm going to give a little bit to get a little bit. Or I'm going to do this on this given circumstance in order to get this later. Or I'm going to really use my power here to influence this environment. And know that there could be a second order of consequence. That, hey, I'm going to undermine and belittle that coach that's always riding me and not really giving me the benefit of the doubt. And that comes back to bite me. And I get just chewed out or I get fired. Right? I'm not a team player here that I don't really see the value of that, or I'm not making my superior's life easier. All that stuff's at play. You know, it might come in the form of, hey, I need you to train my, my kid. Okay, are you going to pay me? No, that's expected. What is this proletariat life at living? Like, how am I going to support myself doing extra time without any kind of compensation? Oh, this is an exchange for maybe one day you'll grant me the opportunity to work for you? That game gets played way too often. But it's a power dynamic. Quid pro quo, help you, help me, that I'm going to create this favoritism with you in order to give myself something later. 
It's all power. It's all manipulating of leverage. It's all that. Take home. Let's start to think about leverage in a tactical and financial set, set, setup. If I can be replaced easily or not at all, or they can just can eliminate the position, zero leverage. But it's going to take a lot of money to replace me. You have a lot of leverage. Think about it from a tactical perspective. What am I doing on a quid pro quo or a, hey, you do this, I do this, or opportunity to get whatever it is that you need on a conditional basis, right? There's an element of that between all entities and athletic departments and organizations. Let's look at module tasks. Thinking about this of what leverage do you have both financially and tactically within your setting? Think about this. Can you be replaced easily or no? And if you can, why not ask for more? If you have a lot of opportunity to get more with your athletes and no one else can touch you in that regard, maybe you should think about playing the power game within your athletic department and trying to get more. And that gives a lot more opportunity to get more compensation. All right, we'll break here. We'll move on to phase number four, which is coming up in the next module.